This video has been kindly sponsored by Moto CNC. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to look at fitting a Moto CNC bar riser top yoke. Now, um, for those of you that uh, saw the video where I fitted the Genmar bar risers, uh, a few people uh, expressed a little bit of concern about the fact that the bars don't clamp the forks um, to the same level as they did prior to fitting the risers. And I fully understand that, you know, I get, the, I get people's concerns. What I will do is I will say that I've done uh, just over 2,000 miles on this bike since um, fitting these risers with absolutely no problems whatsoever. So hopefully that will uh, allay some of your fears. However, this product may well be the thing for those people that have those concerns. So let's uh, open the box and have a look. Okay, before we begin, what I want to do, I want to give a bit of a shout out to uh, Moto CNC. They are sponsoring this video and they very, very kindly sent me this uh, sample of their, uh, of their um, billet top yoke uh, in order for me to be able to make this video. So uh, thank you very much, Moto CNC. And they also have um, allowed a very, very generous 15% discount um, for anybody who goes to the website and uh, mentions me so what i'll do at the end of the video i'll pop the uh, i'll pop the discount code up for everybody so you can all go and uh, all go and use that okay let's um have a look inside the box nicely bubble wrapped motor cnc stickers everywhere and there we have it nice uh, nicely billet and as you can see the engineering is absolutely superb. It feels nice and solid as well. It's absolutely beautiful. In addition to that, you've got the actual risers themselves for the uh, for the bars to clamp to, and these fit in just like so. And then, obviously, the top clamp on there, and we've got all the necessary mounting hardware. Um, in order to be able to fit the uh, the bars to the yoke. Okay, um, the only other thing that we need uh, in order to be able to fit this is we need a new set of bars. So what I've got here, I've got a set of Renthal bars. Now these are 22 mil. Um, I believe they come in a 33 mil. I think it is as well. Um, I'll double check and uh, put the uh, put the links in the description. Um, but Moto CNC do a 22 mil and 33 or whatever the whatever the size is as well. They do they do them in both sizes, so you just buy the one that you're you're more happy with. Right then, let's um, let's get some tools out and have a look at getting this bad boy fitted. Okay, before we begin, uh, I just want to have a quick look at the bars themselves. Obviously, they're going to be sitting something like that, and as you can see, they're significantly longer than uh, than what we've got now. So what? Um, well, I don't really want the bars sticking out any further than they do now. So what I will be doing is I will be trimming these down. I'd suggest that probably an inch off of each end, maybe an inch and a half off of each end, will probably be perfect. Uh, but I'll look at that later on. Right. What we need to do first is we need to start tearing down the hardware uh, in order to get the top yoke off. So we'll be removing the Genmar risers, we need to remove the bracket for the uh, accessory port and the voltmeter, and we need to also remove both the master cylinders, the switch gear, and um, then the, uh, the clip-ons themselves will come off, and then we can, uh, we can tear, into the, uh, tear into the top yoke. So let's, uh, let's get some tools out and have a go. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove my uh, accessory bracket. Now, to get it off, it's just the two um, G2 
JIS screws, one that side and the same on this side. Those two screws need to come out uh, and then the whole his bracket will come off and then the accessory bracket will be removed. It's dead easy, the easiest way to do it is to come up from underneath with your JIS screwdriver, get it on the head of the screw, make sure it's seated properly and then just undo it. That's one on its way out. The other one this side. There it is, there's the screw. The other one this side. They are a bit of a pain to get into and as you'll have seen in the previous video where I fitted this accessory bracket, they can be incredibly tight. And as always, ensure you're using the JIS screwdriver and not a Phillips, because Phillips will strip them out. a bit awkward but just because I'm not left-handed it makes it a bit a bit more of a pain to get into but um, we got there in the end and the screws just dropped down let me grab it and there's the other one okay there's the his bracket out of the way and there is the accessory bracket. Let's just disconnect the electrical cables and there we are. Okay, what I'm gonna do next is remove the bolts on the clip-ons and then we can take the Genmar bar risers off. Okay, before we, uh, before we go ahead and do that, what I'm gonna do, just to protect the bodywork a little bit, is pop a cloth either side so that when when I rest them down, I'm not going to damage me uh, damage me paintwork in any way. 12 mil. They're not particularly tight, if I remember rightly. They're only about 26 newton meters or something like that, so they're not particularly not particularly tight. And there we go. There's one. And there is two. Right. There we go. That's the two Genmar bar risers removed. Pop them all inside. Right. What we need to do next is look at the uh, look at the top yoke. Right then. Next, what we want to do is just remove the top triple clamp bolts on each of the yokes. I well, don't remove them, they don't need to be removed, they can just be loosened off, like so. And there we go. Right, the only thing holding this on the bike now is the centre nut, and the centre nut, um, I'm gonna have to get my, uh, I'm gonna have to get my big socket set out, and uh, what we'll do is we'll loosen that off, whip the nut off, and then the yoke will be free to move from the bike. Okay, this is a 30 mil nut, and here's my 30 mil um, socket. I'm using a six-sided socket because it's less likely to slip and mar up the, the, uh, the nut itself. So we'll get that on, and then what I've got here is a breaker bar, and I'm going to turn the, turn the bars so that it sits against the lock stop, and then um, that will give us something to, something to work against, and then simply loosen her off. It's not particularly, not, not what I would call overly tight, um, but obviously it is on there. So take the nut off. And there we are. Right, let's um, pop this yoke off. The next thing we need to look at is taking the ignition barrel off the bottom of the yoke. Right then, with the nut off, 
and the bolts loosened, we can literally just slide the top yoke of the forks. And what we need to look at next is the ignition barrel. Now the ignition barrel is held in place with two um, security bolts effectively. There, there's nothing in there for us to uh, put a tool into. They're not Allen headed or anything, they're literally round. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a 12 point um, Torx uh, driver and I'm gonna put it on and I'm gonna hammer it into position. Hopefully that'll, that'll go into the nut, uh, into the bolt, sorry, and then I'll be able to twist it off. Um, all being well, if not, what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to remove the part from the bike and then drill them, drill the heads off uh, and then um, we should be able to, uh, we should be able to uh, crack on. Okay, what I'm gonna do first is to avoid having to remove it from the bike, if I can, I'm just gonna remove that tie wrap so that, oh, and another one, there's two. I'll replace these again later. Right, that gives us a little bit of room to manoeuvre, so to speak. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop that back on like so, and that gives me something to, to work against. And then, in fact, can I get it over like that? Yes, I can. All right, perfect. Couldn't have asked it. That's for it to be better. Right, I need to grab a hammer. We'll give that a good whack in and then see if we can get it out. Right, let's get the tool in. Give it a good whack with a hammer and see. See how we get on. Right, let's get the big ratchet. Absolutely perfect. Couldn't have asked for it to go better. It's winding out absolutely fine. Let me grab an extension to make it easier to hold on to. You don't need to worry about these bolts. There are replacement bolts in the kit. And there's the first one. Right, what I need to do is pop that off there. And then same for the other side. Obviously, I understand that some people will have a little bit of mechanical sympathy when it comes to uh, comes to their tools. Um, so if you if you do care about damaging them, then perhaps don't use this method. Drill, drill them out instead. But to drill them out, you're probably going to have to remove it from the bike. And there we are, that's both the bolts removed. They came out pretty easy, really. And there's the ignition barrel. Pop that to one side. And there's the top yoke. No longer required. Right, next stage is to look at um, getting, the, uh, getting the new top yoke fitted onto the bike. And then we can look at all the switch gear and all that good stuff. Okay. Looking at the hardware, um, I'm a little bit disappointed. Um, I did say a moment ago that I expected there to be um, more bolts uh, in order to be able to fit the ignition barrel onto this top yoke. However, um, the six bolts in the package, these four longer ones, these four longer ones are the ones that actually hold the risers onto the yoke itself in there. So they're um, not for the ignition. And then the only other ones that you could use are these two, but these are gonna be for the, um, the actual fork clamps themselves. So they don't actually include any new bolts, which I'm disappointed with because I don't particularly wanna reuse the ones I've had to hammer at all into in order to get them out. Um, and there is no real other way of getting them out short of drilling them. So what I've had to do is um, I've had to raid my, uh, my box of bolts um, and what I've got here 
There are a couple of Allen headed, uh, Allen headed uh, machine screws. These are M8 by 1.25, and these particular ones are um, 20 mil long, and that's from the underside of the head. Um, they should be perfectly adequate um, for for what we need here. Uh, but in order to use them, what we need to do is use these little bits out of the kit. Uh, these are like little spacers. Um, and a couple of little rod screws. Now, in order to fit these, what we need to do, I'll pop these up there so they don't roll away. This uh, this top box has proven pretty pretty handy for that sort of thing. So, what we need to do is we need to fit these into the top yoke like so. And then we take these little spaces out of the kit and fit them on like so. I'll just dip them up as tight as I can get them. Right, and if I grab the original yoke and we have a look, you can see now what the spaces are for. If you didn't fit the spaces, the the ignition barrel itself would stick out quite significantly at the top of the um, at the top of the yoke, and it would look really really odd. So the only reason I can think of for this is machining um, machining uh, difficulties. It's quite difficult to machine something like that uh, in CNC. Um, that's obviously cast, um, whereas this is um, CNC milled. Um, and then you can fit these afterwards, and it does the job perfectly well. So so yeah, I, as I said, I'm disappointed that there wasn't the bolts. Um, included as well. Um, perhaps they were just missing out of my kit. That I don't know. Perhaps Moto CNC can come back uh, in the comments and let me know what's um, what's going on there or what they pre prefer to uh, to do with this. Maybe maybe there's some other solution that they expect you to uh, to do that I've missed uh, that I'm just not getting. But um, but yeah, easily overcome. A couple of 20 mil uh, M8 bolts and we're uh, and we're back in business. Right. What I need to do now um, is obviously fit the ignition barrel to this and then we can uh, we can pop this on the bike. Right, what do we need to do is get the ignition barrel on, like so, pop these bolts through. Um, one thing of note actually, I did initially uh, grab a couple of hex head bolts, however, um, the walls of the uh, the socket I tried to use were, were far too thick and it wouldn't fit into this um, this little recess. So that's worth that's the reason why I went with Allen headed and um, yeah they'll uh, they'll do the job perfectly well. Let me get it on there, screw them down. started and I'm just gonna give them a good nip and then we should be good to go And there we are. That is the ignition barrel fitted on, uh, and I'm pretty happy with that. All I need to do later on is um, just make sure that uh, we tie wrap that back together as it was before, and we uh, we should be fine. Right now, what we can do is we can fit the top yoke back onto the bike and push her all the way down. And there we go. That's it on the uh, on the top of the forks, and 
looks pretty nice. I'm, I'm really liking the, uh, the the finish here. One thing I will say is this is obviously a black anodized finish. It's available in silver. Um, I, I think there was um, another finish where um, whereby it was it was unanodized and you could paint it in any color you wanted, if I recall correctly. Um, obviously, check out the website, Moto CNC um, website. Uh, I'll leave the link to it in the description. And um, yeah, go and check it out. And don't forget that uh, don't forget that all important 15% uh, discount, guys. Right. What I need to do next, get the top nut on, get it torqued up. Okay, top nut. Winder on just like so. Now, one thing that is important to, uh, to note is this top nut needs to be done before the, um, the, the, the fork clamps. Don't do the fork clamps and then the top nut because what you'll effectively be doing is trying to do that with the top yoke. You need to tighten the whole thing down onto the steering stem and then do the, um, the clamps on the end of the forks and uh, everything will be good. Right, that nut is tightened to 103 newton meters. So I've got the torque wrench here. Um, I think what I'll do is a little extension just to clear the tank. And then what we'll do again is allow it to lean against the steering lock. And there we are, 103 Newton meters. Okay. All right, next thing I want to do is the, um, the fork clamps, and they are 23 newton meters. Let me just get these up to touch. And then torque wrench, 23 newton meters. That is the yoke installed on the bike. And as you see, it does look quite tasty. Okay, disappointingly, what I do need to do is I need to talk about my accessory bracket. Now, the different shape of this yoke does not allow for this accessory bracket to be fitted um, onto this yoke. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have to modify it. Now, what I'll most likely do is mount it underneath here um, underneath the bracket but in order to do that I basically need to cut these corners off um, because the spacer that we fitted earlier on in an earlier stage actually interferes with the accessory bracket so it's not you know it's it's not insurmountable it just means that I've got to um, basically trim the uh, the corners off here and even it I don't even have to make it look nice because you won't see it anyway so um, yeah what I'll do I'll um, do that later on I'm not going to bother with that today um, I'm just going to get the uh, get this yoke fitted um, and then uh, yeah um, it's a disappointment but not uh, not a life changer um, it's still well worth doing this mod right anyway let's move on to uh, actually getting the bars fitted here we have the brackets for the uh, for the bars. On the bottom, as you can see, it says 30 mil high, 22 mil bar. So that's exactly what they are. Um, so this should raise the bars 30 mil higher than they would have been, and it accepts a 22 mil um, section bar. To fit these, it's just a case of popping them into their locations like so, and then the top caps will fit on just like that. Um, I'll let me get the other one out of the bag. And there we go. And if I grab a couple of bolts, we'll be able to see how they go in. And they mount just like so. Uh, 
and there we go as you can see they look uh they look nicely machined as well they're very very well engineered um it's a very nice piece of kit um right let's uh let's go and grab the bars and pop them into the adapters and see where we are okay here are the bars now one thing i do want to point out is that the bars themselves do actually contact the tops of the forks ever so slightly and if i try and rotate them into a position where i'd actually want them you can see that these little risers are actually lifting ever so slightly off the yoke so to that end i've got no other option really but to drop the forks through through the yokes ever so slightly probably only a couple of mil will probably do it to be perfectly honest but um yeah if i um if i drop them probably five mil through the forks um then uh, I reckon we'll have a little bit more clearance. Now that will have an effect on the uh, the handling of the bike. It will it'll probably make it steer a bit um, a little bit uh, slower. Um, but um, yeah, on on a bike like this, I'm not overly concerned about that to be honest. And we can make adjustments as necessary uh, in order to um, you know uh, improve the handling where where we need to anyway. So what I'm going to do is just pop the caps on just to hold the uh, hold the bars in the right place and then i'm going to lift the front of the bike and then drop the forks a couple of mil probably about five mil uh, and then uh, i'll bring you back in okay what i've done i've dropped each of the forks five mil down through the yokes it was a pain obviously the wheels got to come off and all that good stuff loosen all the bolts and everything move the mud guard out the way um, and then each of the forks has been dropped exactly five millimeters so um, that the, the bars now sit in a much nicer position. As you can see, they're not quite contacting the, um, there is a small gap between the fork, probably only about half a millimeter, but it's enough. Anyway, I've got them, I've, got the, I've sat on the bike um, and I've got the bars in exactly the position I wanted. They are level through the yokes because um, we can see we've got these little gradients. Uh, don't know if you can make them out. You can just, just about see these little gradients on there and um, that helps you centralize the bars in the yokes. Anyway, all I need to do now is tighten them down. So in order to tighten them down, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna nip each one up on each side, making the, uh, the top clamp, making sure the top clamp is level on the risers. Give them a good tighten. There we go. And the same on this one. Just level them off. Now, I didn't get any instructions with this yoke. So I don't know if there's a specified torque setting um, for them. However, what I'm doing is I'm not going to over, I'm not going to grolly them in because obviously this is only aluminium. Um, but yeah, they feel nice and solid now and I can lift the bike up and down at the front and they're not moving, so I'm happy with them. One thing I was gonna point out was I did say that I was gonna trim a little bit off the end. Um, however, having sat on the bike, they do feel quite nice and they are wider, um, but I actually quite like the position. It feels, it feels quite nice. Um, one thing to point out is I can go lock to lock onto the steering lock. The bars aren't interfering with the tank and the other way it doesn't interfere with the body work at all so yeah we're all good we're all good with that okay next step is to obviously remove all the controls from the original bars and fit them onto these bars um one thing that i will point out is probably to get the throttle tube over the end i am probably going to need to um loosen the bars uh, in order to do that uh, because there won't be enough stretch on the cables in order to get that on um, so we'll have to do that but uh, yeah, so let's um, let's get the controls off of the original clip-ons and a look at getting them on these bars. Okay, on the left-hand side, the two things we need to remove is the master cylinder along with the heat controller for the grips um, and the left-hand switch gear. This grip is obviously glued onto this clip-on, so um, that won't be coming off. I do have uh, I have managed to grab myself a, a spare left-hand one, so I've got one of those anyway. So we'll begin by undoing these bolts. One. Uh, 
um, two. And I did drop, just then I did drop the, uh, the spacer and the front, the front cover. So I'll put them to one side. Okay, that's the master cylinder and the heat controller off. Next, we need to remove the, uh, the left hand switch gear and that is simply these two screws. Again, JIS, don't get your Phillips on there, you'll just round them off. One. And two. Pop that over the top. And there we go. Right. One thing's worth uh, noting is this plastic disc is going to have to come off. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to cut this um, grip off or get it off in some way just so I can remove this plastic disc because that is incorporated into the switch gear on the left hand side so I will need it so yeah well um, it's a bit destructive but I don't need this grip anymore um, so I'm not overly concerned about it right let me uh, let me get all that sorted out and then I'll bring you back in um, once I'm fair once I've got this plastic disc off right then as you can see I have chopped off the grip um, and you can see the glue that's been left behind um, but it allowed me to get the little plastic bit off so what I've done I've slid it onto the new bars I've then taken the liberty of fitting the replacement um, left hand grip to the bike and then that allowed me to take some measurements of the uh, of the bars and then I've uh, been able to cut off um, the excess on the on the ends of each bar uh, and as you can see I've obviously got a mark there ready for the other side and that's um, the measurements taken for the the throttle tube etc etc to allow the, um, the controls to fit uh, and allow enough room for the throttle tube anyway I'm digressing slightly what I need to do next is I do want to discuss something um, regarding the regarding the switch gear on the on the uh, switch gear itself you can see this little nub just here um, that little nub obviously fits into this little hole on the standard bars now the standard bars you will see inside it's it's not a it's, it's actually a blind hole it doesn't go all the way through and um, there's a, a, another tube inside here which obviously helps maintain the strength of the bar despite the fact that there's a hole in there now what I've done um, I took the liberty of having a good look around the internet to see what people did to um, overcome the fact that the rental bars don't have a hole in and I came across quite a few um, forum posts yeah you know yada 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 where people have actually drilled the bars now obviously that's up to them that's entirely their choice um, and it's their bike so they can do what they want however um, what I did find on the rental site is it specifically states on their site for these bars the uh, the rental bars not to drill them so I'm going to err on the side of Renful um, because they make them, they know what they're talking about. I'm not going to drill them. Um, what I'm going to do is um, with a little round file, I'm just going to file that little nub off so it's, um, so it's flush with the, uh, the rest of this radius. Um, and then what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a little bit of insulation tape just around here. Now the idea of that is just to give, when I clamp this down, um, I don't want it to, to turn. Um, hence the reason why that stub's there on the standard bars is to stop the uh, stop the control turning around the bar um, but I want to give it the best chance of um, being gripped so I'm going to put a little bit of tape around here and that will do that right this second a little bit of tape I'm not going to put too much on because obviously if I put too much on it will just make the bars extra thick and um, it will make it really difficult to to get it on so I'm just going to put a little bit of insulation tape around and that will give the controls something to grip onto 
And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to file that nub off. So what I'll do, I'll file the nub off, and then I'll bring you back in um, when we uh, when we when I've done that, and we, we'll we'll get the switch gear mounted onto the bar. Okay, so now I've got that. Um, now I've got the tape in uh, in there. That should give me something to grip onto. But what I do need to do, I do need to move the disc disc of plastic into the right place. There we go. Right. Let me get the uh, screws in. Now what I've got here, I've got a great deal of room to get in with my JIS screwdriver and keep this in the right place. So what I might do, I think, just loosen the clamps off, rotate the bars, and then I can get in with the JIS screwdriver where I want to be um, in order to tighten these screws up. So what I'll do I get these two screws tightened and then I bring it back in and then we'll uh, we'll look at mounting the clutch. Okay, that's on there nice and tight and I can't really move it. So I, I'm happy that, that's, um, that that tape is doing the job. It's gripping there nice and tightly. So moving on, next thing we need to do is obviously mount the clutch lever. Now, I did uh, give it a good measure as to whereabouts I wanted it to be, um, and this is the position I came up with. Um, obviously, I need about three hands for this part of the job, because I need to be able to hold this in position at the same time, get the little spacer in place, and mount all the bolts up. So, bear with me on this one. Let me get the bottom bolt in, and that'll help. All right, so the bottom one's in. So I've got a little spacer at the top here. There we go. All right, that's helped me out. So that's them started. All right, what I want to do is obviously I need to get the clutch in roughly the place where I need it to be. Um, but I can I can make fine adjustments later. I'm not overly concerned about it being absolutely perfect now. I just want to get it on. Um, so let's nip these up. And there we go. That is the left side all done. All I need to do is uh, fit a bar end, but I'll do that in a bit. Um, I have got a set of Renfold bar ends, which match these uh, bars perfectly. So what we need to do next is obviously move on to the right hand side. But um, at the present, um, all the controls are still mounted onto the clip on. So I need to get them off, uh, which is pretty straightforward, and then mount them onto here. Okay then, right hand side controls. What I need to do is obviously remove the brake master cylinder and the lever pop the bolts there on my little cloth there's the cap and the bolt and there no, there we go. Well I've done. I removed the uh, removed the brake light switch. Um, oh, sorry, the cables from the the brake switch, the brake light switch, um, just to give me a little bit of a uh, maneuverability. I can move it around a bit more. Right. Next thing I need to do is with my J uh, screwdriver again, just pop the pop these two screws out. One, and two. Okay, right, take the cap off, you can see the throttle assembly inside. Now, what we need to do to get the, uh, to get the throttle tube off is if I gently press down, that little nub that we were talking about a moment ago on the other side will be out of the, out of the clip on. Oops, that's the 
tape falling off my fuel tank. Um, yeah, slide the uh, slide the clip on out, and there we go. There's the little hole that we were talking about, and there's and there's the little nub. Again, what we need to do on this side, it's uh, it's actually a metal insert, and I think it'll actually pull out uh, with a with a set of grips. I should just be able to wind that out, and. Um, yeah, we should be uh, should be good. We, I shouldn't need to file that side off. In fact, it'd be quite difficult to get a file in there, to be fair. Right then, what I need to do next is just mount all of this on this uh, on this bar. It's exactly the same, um, pretty much, as the other side. Again, I'll put a little bit of tape around here. Once I've got that nub off, a little bit of tape around, just so that it's got something to grip onto. And then um, I'll mat it all up. What I'm going to have to do, because I don't have the extra play in the cables, I'm actually going to have to dismount this, move it over slightly so I can get it on. Um, and then, uh, yeah, what, what I'll do though, I'll get all of that done, um, and then I'll bring you back in uh, when, we're, uh, when, we're, when we're done. Right, so there we are. That is the, uh, the right-hand switch gear, all mounted up. If I twist the throttle, as you can see, the, uh, it stays exactly where it was, and I've done exactly the same as I did on the other side with a bit of tape, and it's, it's clamped it quite nicely. I'm quite happy with the way it is. So, what we need to do next, <coughs> is fit the right hand master cylinder the uh, the brake master cylinder it's only holding with two bolts dead easy make sure we get it in the right place i reckon about there obviously i need to sit on the bike really and have a have a pull on the brakes just to make sure that I'm happy with the with the position, um, but yeah, that, that can be adjusted at any time. Okay. Uh, I'm going to guess at about about there, I reckon. Uh, as I said. I'll have a tweak with that later. Okay, and there we go, right. I did disconnect the brake switch to give me a little bit of room to maneuver, so we need to connect that again. And there we go. What I do need to do is obviously sort out all these um, cables, make sure that they're all um, you know, tie wrapped out the way and that they're not interfering with anything. Let me get the hiss. Get that up here. That goes on there. But yeah, as we can see, none of the cables are under any undue tension, none of the hoses, and everything's free to move. Everything's all good. Right. Okay. What I do want to do is just quickly talk about the bars themselves now what i opted for here was the um the low version of the bike uh, the the uh, the renfall bars they do a medium and a high and obviously the lower med medium are probably around about here and higher quite quite significantly high and to be fair the high ones would probably interfere with the bodywork um <coughs> Using the low bars, I haven't had to change any of the, the brake lines. They're, they're all stock. I haven't had to extend them. I haven't had to extend any cable in, anything at all. Literally um, put them on as they, uh, as they are and everything's good. What I will do is just to give you a little bit of comparison. That is roughly how the stock bar would have sat on the stock yoke give or take a few mil so you, you can see the difference that these bars have made to how you know how the the comfort of the bike will be um this, this quite, it's quite a significant um it's quite a significant jump that is very very approximate i will i will say that's very approximate um but it's ru it's roughly around about there that's roughly where the uh where the stock bars were so yeah as, as you can see this you know this this is quite a significant change to the uh you know the, the the way you ride the bike anyway what i do want to do next is just quickly cover over what i'm going to do with my accessory bracket right as i said before 
the uh, the accessory bracket wouldn't fit onto this yoke. Um, the the bracket did come down a, a bit more of an angle. So what what I'll do, I'll put up a picture uh, right now so you can see what it was like before. But as you can see, I've just smoothed off these edges, rounded them off a little bit, and then that will uh, will hopefully fit in there. And what I've got here, I've got a couple of little spaces. These are the spaces that they use to fit the uh, heat controllers onto these hot grips. I had a couple uh, lying around from the one that I took off my um, SV, for those of you that saw that video. Um, what I'm gonna have to do is use these spaces because otherwise the underside of the, the voltmeter actually contacts with the underside of the yoke. And this just spaces it out and that should do the job perfectly. Um, if I pop it into position, push the bolts through a bit and there we go and as you can see there You'll see what I mean about the voltmeter being just underneath the yoke. That's the reason why I put the spaces in there, just to give it a little bit of clearance. But it'll still be perfectly usable, and um, the same with the USB port. I've had to angle it so that the little cap, the little part of the um, cap that you lift, isn't underneath the yoke. Um, again, not not um, you know not not, not a life changer. Um, and I've also fitted longer bolts um, out of my uh, out of my um, out of my spares box. So yeah, we're uh, we're away. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly nip these up if I can get onto the screws. started quite awkward to get into as it always is I'm doing this one without even being able to see it so That's them both started, so they'll just need tightening up. But that's um, that's basically how my uh, accessory ports are going to look. And yeah, I'm, I'm happy with the way that is. I'm, I'm not uh, I'm not concerned about it at all. All of this cabling is going to get um, all all tucked out of the way, all tie wrapped back where it was. And I do need to adapt the uh, the heated grip, but I'm not going to bother boring you with that. Um, I can do that off the camera and then just plug it in it's straightforward a little bit of soldering nothing too uh, nothing too strenuous right then guys hopefully you enjoyed this video um i think they look absolutely fantastic it's an absolutely smashing bit of kit and obviously this will allay any fears that anyone has about the bar risers that i used previously not being strong enough um to support any weight um i think uh you know this this is a really, really nice solution. Very, very beef, and um, it'll, you know, it'll be perfectly adequate for uh, for for what I need. And it's a really, really nice position. Um, as I said before, Moto CNC have kindly offered a uh, generous 15% discount to anybody that goes to the website. If you use the um, the code KevShed15, that's KevShed15. I'll put it at the bottom um, in the checkout. It will um, it will discount anything that you purchase there by fifteen percent, which is a you know it's a hell of a save, and it's very very kind of them to do so. So yeah, pop along, have a look at what they've got. They've got loads of different things. They do they do the standard bar risers, much like the Genmar ones that I did before, um, but uh, their own and they're a nice bit of kit. Um, Craig Lowe from Motorevs, uh, he uses a set and he rates them. He he really really likes them. So yeah, go over there, have a look at what they've got. And, you know, you might find something that, uh, that takes your fancy and you can buy it with a 15% discount. Okay, guys. Thank you very, very much for 
watching this video. Thank you for stopping by. Don't forget to give the uh, video a like if you enjoyed it and uh, hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you all again for the next video. Bye bye now.